Hi guys and welcome to today's oil painting video. In this video I wanted to talk about how I approach starting an oil painting and also how I bring it all together in the end. I will share some general tips with you about painting with oils as well. Before I begin I would like to thank Light Limner Zoo who kindly allowed me to use her photograph as a reference image for this oil painting. I included links to her account in the video description. Make sure to follow her on social media. There are many different approaches you can take when starting an oil painting. In this video I wanted to share the two approaches that I personally find most convenient to use. First, generally speaking, you can either start right off the bat with an already formed idea of what you wanted to paint, or you can let yourself get inspired by ideas or images you come across. I personally feel that when you are seeking inspiration, Pinterest is one of the easiest ways to find it. Since creative people can easily be plagued by a lack of inspiration, I try to make sure I always keep a huge assortment of images on an inspiration wall so I know where to look when I don't know what to paint. Once you have an idea of what you want to paint, you need to get reference pictures, which will help you to render your idea properly. Unless your style is very comic-like or abstract, using reference pictures will hugely improve your painting. Like many artists, I find most of my reference pictures on the internet. To get specific body postures, I use my smartphone and I use myself as a model for gestures or poses. Sometimes I also have models to come in to do photo shoots with me if someone is available. The process of gathering reference material can be very time consuming and I personally find it to be the hardest part of starting a painting. When I have gathered enough reference material, I can finally start putting my composition together. Depending on how much time you have, you can either move on to the painting process right away with the help of your reference materials, or you can prepare a a digital composition that you use to paint from. When I use the first technique, I avoid compiling the full composition beforehand. And this allows me to develop an image more freely and the image changes and evolves throughout the painting process until I am happy with it. When I start an oil painting in this way, I begin by freehanding and underdrawing the portrait on my canvas. Then I add additional objects like flowers, butterflies or birds. On my YouTube channel you can see many videos where I applied this technique. I will leave you some links for these videos in the description. I love this technique a lot because I don't have to follow my reference photos so strictly. However, this is the most time consuming technique and since I always have a full schedule, I rarely find time to use this painting technique. The second technique I use when I start oil paintings is to prepare the composition digitally in Photoshop before I begin. The painting you see emerging here was created using this technique and it usually involves using one or more photos that I alter, crop or even turn into something completely new after piecing together different body parts, clothing and backgrounds. This second technique allows me to save a lot of time because I can prepare everything beforehand and figure out which composition looks the best before painting. When painting using this image you see, I only made minor changes to the photo. I added elf ears and I changed her facial proportions with the Photoshop Liquify filter. After I finished creating just the right composition, I print it out and trace it onto my canvas before I begin to paint. I'm always a bit shocked, even though I've done it for years now, at how much work goes into the process of preparing or finding the right image, even before the traditional process of applying paint ever begins. Finally, after that process, we have reached the point where we can begin to paint. I personally prefer painting on a fine pre gessoed portrait canvas a lot when creating oil paintings. I also like building my canvases by hand, although you don't have to do this yourself. You can find ready to paint canvases in a variety of sizes at every art store. If you would like to try out the process, I've made a video showing you how to do that. The link for that video is in the description. Once you have everything prepared, you can start your painting. I like to begin painting the face, but you can start wherever you wish. Since this video shows how I paint an already prepared image, I will talk about how to proceed using this technique. If you wanted to learn about the freehand painting process instead, please watch my other videos where I completed paintings using this technique. 
When I start a painting session, I like to think about which portions of the composition I plan to finish within that day. Doing this helps me to avoid getting lost in the painting or getting stuck forever in one spot. For example, one day I might plan to paint the face and the next day I might focus on her dress. Basically, I try to plan which parts should I paint first and which parts later. A good example that illustrates this planning process is seen when I paint lace. To recreate the textile pattern, I use a tiny brush and draw the individual strands with liquid white oil paint. In order to accomplish this though, I need to recognize during the planning process that I have to first finish painting everything that lies underneath the lace. In this painting, the doll is wearing a dress with a lace bow. In order to paint the delicate pattern of the bow lace details, I have to first complete painting the dress beneath. I apply a similar technique when painting hair as well. Before I add tiny individual strands of hair, I need to first complete the rest of the segments of hair beneath. Generally speaking, you can plan to start rendering the larger and bulkier portions of the painting first before adding more detailed areas. Many artists also like to paint the background first before adding the figure and sometimes I find this very useful too. Over the years I have developed various techniques for creating different things like flowers, hair, lips, eyes and so on. But when you start your first oil painting, don't be too hard on yourself. First focus on getting a feeling for the paint. Gaining a sense of the qualities of a medium can be more important than one might think. This might involve knowing how your paint reacts in general, how it will work when you use more or less paint thinner, or how they will react in relationship with other different paint mediums. This is an extremely important process and the first step towards learning to paint. After you know what your paint does, it will be easier for you to automatically develop your own techniques. You will also better understand what other artists have done when you are viewing artwork. Always remember that every painting stroke will make you a better painter. I know the learning process can feel overwhelming from time to time. If an image is too overwhelming, you can always paint a simple one. Or if you still want to paint a more elaborate one, it might help to break down a painting into its parts and paint them individually. Another important thing that I like to mention about oil painting is that a canvas or a board can only take so much paint. After applying a certain amount of paint, the surface begin to feel like a smudgy paste and at that point it is no longer possible to paint further details. If you reach that point but you are still unhappy with your progress, you can either let the paint dry and paint on top of it or wipe it off and start over. This is the characteristic of oil painting that bothers me the most. I am pretty impatient and having to wait until certain parts of a painting are dry before I can continue can be very hard for me. Still, I try to make sure to give my art the attention that it needs and I remind myself that it's always worth it and that the painting will be better in the end if I wait. You can add as many layers as you want and although I was taught that we should lay thick layers over thin ones, I've never encountered problems with adding thin layers at the end of the painting process. Actually, adding thin washes and tinting parts of my painting are important finishing touches that bring everything together in the end. When you paint every part of an image individually, like I do, sometimes these various parts can look a bit separated and might not fit perfectly well together. So to unify my composition, I pick certain colors of the overall color scheme and add them here and there on my painting. I add thin washes of paint as well to correct things and smooth out rough edges. It's also an important practice to view your painting from a distance. I like to compare this to viewing a thumbnail of an image. At a distance, you can easily find parts of the painting that might need additional changes. Oftentimes, I also like to adjust the contrast of my painting by adding additional highlights and shades. If you like to learn more about the materials I used for this oil painting, I listed everything in the video description. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you have suggestions for future videos, please leave your ideas in the comment section. I call this painting Lyria and 20 limited edition finer prints are already available in my online shop. The original will be available at an upcoming two artist show in Scotland in April. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.
For more in-depth painting tutorials, head over to my Patreon page and select the $5 reward tier. You will gain instant access to over 50 downloadable painting tutorials, which provide you with insights into my working progress. I also answer your questions and share helpful tips about art materials. For $10 a month, you get exclusive access to both my live stream and real-time painting videos. For $15 or more, you get beautiful art surprises, finer prints, original watercolor illustrations and much more.